Thanks to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Drawing Everything That I Am Terrible At Drawing. The series where I create a drawing consisting only of things that I have never drawn before, things I'm not very good at drawing, I create something completely different, completely opposite than my normal style of artwork, and not only is this series a great way for me to completely step out of my comfort zone, push myself to try new things, but this series is a great way for me to learn and improve not just for myself, not just for my channel, not just for my artwork, but for you guys watching at home. So yeah, before I expose myself for all the things I'm not good at drawing, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Bowie. <laughs> Just kidding, it's not Bowie, it's never been Bowie. Uh, it's, it's function of beauty. Now, self-care has always been important, especially if you're not feeling so good. Pamper, de-stress, and take care of yourself all at the same time with Function of Beauty's customizable hair care range. Now, Function of Beauty, their products are delivered right to your door, meaning you don't have to leave the house, which is always a plus. <laughs> Function of Beauty makes customizing their hair care products very easy with their two minute online quiz, where all you do is answer questions about your hair type, hair goals, and personal preferences. And when customizing, you get to choose your own color, your own fragrances, as well as whatever name you want printed directly on the bottle. There's no parabens, no sulfate, no GMOs, no toxins. They are 100% vegan, cruelty free. And I personally love the fact that it's so customizable. And I think it's so great how they consider so many different hair types and needs and goals for so many different people. And even though I recently bleached the daylights out of my hair, Function of Beauty has made the recovery process so much better. And whenever I was customizing, the colors that I picked were green and pink. I picked up the scent Eucalyptus in the strongest one they have. You guys know I love, love, love Eucalyptus. And for the specific formula that I chose, I wanted my hair to be lengthened, repaired, nourished, and volumized. And it's just been so nice to incorporate a product that's so personalized in my self-care routine. It's made my self-care and hair routine that much more fabulous and that much more easier. And for some extra pampering, Function of Beauty also offers some extra hair care products, which are 100% customized and can be added to any order. I got the leave-in conditioner, which has been so nice to just put in my hair, do the one-step nourishing routine, and go on with my day. And to add even more convenience, Function of Beauty offers a subscription service where you can get ongoing deliveries of your personalized formula. You can choose to get it delivered every single month, every two months, three months, and six months, which is really, really nice. It's one less thing to worry about. Function of Beauty is currently available in the following places. You can cancel at any time, and you can also change up the scents, the hair goals, as often as you want. You can follow my link in the description box down below to get 20% off your very first order. A big thank you again to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video and making it possible. Okay, let's get this party started, shall we? Now, the very first thing that I am not very good at drawing, in fact, I think it's more normal for people to struggle with this than not struggle with this. And if you're one of those people who can easily draw this with no problem, I'm convinced you are a wizard. And that is hands. Now, I think we can all agree that hands are like the artist's bane. Now, I have always struggled with hands because uh, I'm struggling right now, actually. <laughs> now, with hands, you have to be very, very careful. They're very, very easy to mess up. And it's just one of those things where if you have a proportion that's even slightly, even slightly out of whack, it's not gonna look right, you know? In fact, for this drawing, I think I'm gonna reference my own hand. Now, I just want to say that hands are so finicky and they're such a pain in the butt that I have gone to extreme lengths in drawings to hide hands. Wow. Boom, one hand is done and I made it out alive. And this leads me to the next thing that I am not very good at drawing and that is foreshortened people. Now, I feel like the human figure is already kind of hard to pose and it gets even harder whenever you add a crazy angle to it. And I'm not gonna lie, I've always struggled with foreshortening because not only are you adding in the correct proportions, but you also have to consider the angle of everything. You know what I mean? Eh. And for this, whoa. Now, I wanna give a huge shout out to this app called 3D Magic Poser. I'll insert some footage of me using it. And basically, you can customize the model in any way, shape, or form that you want. And it helps you so much more understand like the pose that you're gonna create, which is really, really nice. And it helped me understand this pose today. Trying to get into this little tiny hand crevice right here. Meh. <laughs> nah. 
Ugh, I've been doing the same shoulder for like 20 minutes now. And that's the thing with foreshortening is that nothing looks right. Everything's all distorted, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm not gonna lie, uh, foreshortening is kind of difficult. All right, cool. So here's the bare bones of the drawing and we are an hour in. <laughs> That's how long it took me to uh, film this. And I spent a majority of the time erasing and redrawing this dang shoulder right here. <sighs> But yeah, here we go. Here are the bare bones of the drawing and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out so far. Now you may notice that she is missing a face and that's because it leads me to the next thing and that is creating my own original character. Something I have rarely if never done on this, the history of this YouTube channel. So I thought, you know what? Today would be a good day to do that. All right, so let's see for my character. Lips would go right here, nose would typically go right about here, and the eyes would go right around here. Now, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I have been dying to see a character with a widow's peak. I think widow's peaks are so cool. I think they're so unique, and I don't think you really see them when it comes to uh, artwork a lot of time. So I'm gonna draw her a widow's peak, and I'm also gonna be drawing her a ponytail. Look at that ponytail, so majestic. I want her to have really long hair, so I'm gonna bring the ponytail all the way down here. Oh, I just realized I completely forgot about her ears. I want her ponytail to reach to the front, like, like that. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna add tendrils. I love whenever the ladies have tendrils. Yeah, there we go. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really excited because since this is my original character, I can make her into whatever I want. And since we're dealing with original characters, we're gonna take this even farther to something even more removed than my normal style. Not just an OC, but a fantasy OC. And every single time I play like an RPG or like Diablo, I always, always, always pick the Necromancer which is kind of like a character that can control and raise the dead. So my friends, from this point forward, my OC is going to be designed as a necromancer. Now my OC, she's gonna have some really strappy goth clothes. I think that's gonna look really cool and very appropriate for her power. First of all, I need to fix her top. She's like raising the dead in a sports bra. Mood. But there is one last thing that I would like to do and that is make her wear a mask because not even all powerful necromancers are immune to current situations of the world. Now you're probably wondering why her eyes are completely blank, like why there's no eyeballs. <laughs> and that's because when I color her, she's gonna be using her powers. And you know how in movies and stuff like that, whenever they use their powers and their eyes go white, that's the uh, situation that's going on here. All right, so here, ladies and gentlemen, is the bare bones of my very first uh, fantasy drawing. And it's so exciting. I think it's coming along really great so far. So now that I'm done with my OZ, this brings me to the next thing that I am just terrible, 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 terrible at drawing, and that is fine lining. Oh. Now I have mentioned this several, several, several times on my channel, but I have the world's shakiest hand. Like normal people, they can just do a straight line. But when I try to fine line with my shaky hand, it's all, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, I can never make a perfect line without messing it up, you know what I mean? So I definitely wanted to include this in the series. <sighs> Now, for the fine liner, I have this really cool light box which you just plug into a computer and look. Which is really, really nice for when you're gonna do what I'm about to do, which is transfer my drawing. Gosh, that was so, so difficult. Ugh. And even the final one that I made, it's not perfect, but it's the best that I could do. Let's see how many attempts I did. I did one, two, three, four, five different attempts, five. But anyway, you're probably wondering why I added so many extra lines to the drawing to imply shadows. And this leads me to the next thing that is actually a style that I have never, ever, ever, 
ever, ever, ever done in my whole entire life. And that is a comic book style and coloring. Now, I absolutely love the comic book style. I love the old school, I love the new school. I love how they imply lines and shadows and bright colors, highlights, I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. And today, I am gonna try my take at that. Now, usually whenever you see like the necromancer characters, they have like a pure white hair. But today, I'm gonna experiment with blue hair just to make it a little bit more visually interesting. And to shade the hair, I'm gonna go in with a super, super light gray like this, like almost transparent. And this is where it's very, very different from what I'm used to because usually I just go in with a pure black and just like blend them, you know? But this, you have to be very, very strategic. <sighs> I'm concentrating so hard I just forgot to breathe. <laughs> oh, man. All right, cool. So the hair is mostly done. Now, one thing that I've kept a secret so far is why her hand is stick sticking straight out. And the reason for that is because I, with this cool marker that conveniently matches my nails, I'm gonna draw a neon orb of power that's like radiating from her hands. I think that's gonna look really, really neat. And because her hands are glowing, I'm also gonna add it to her clothes because of the reflection. Oh, you know who this kind of reminds me of? Uh, Shigo from, from Kim Possible. You remember her, how she had like the light up hands? Yes, that looks so cool so far. The reflection, it looks so nice. Now for her clothes, I'm thinking about going in with like a really dark purple kind of moment. Now for her face mask, also do purple. And I would like to take this time while I'm coloring in her face mask to promote wearing one, very, very important. Now for the skin, I want it to remain pure white so it kind of looks like, you know, got that like undead kind of thing going on. But I am gonna add shadows to it using only grays. <sighs> I keep forgetting to breathe because I'm so concentrated. <sighs> Now with this style of coloring, it is so drastically different when it comes to like adding in the shadows and highlights. Uh, like for example, this leg right here, I would have just blended it all together. But instead of blending it, I had to tactfully think of how I was gonna add the shadows and highlights. Now, usually when I do realism, like my paintings, I like the background to pull forward the main subject matter. But something that I'm gonna do today, which is completely stepping out of my comfort zone, is that I'm gonna imply a story with the background, with these two little things that I have here. So what I'm gonna do is make these two circles right here, like these skull things that she summoned out of the ground. That way you get more information about the character without me having to even say anything. And the color that I'm gonna go in with is a really, really, really subtle green. And the reason I'm choosing a green is because it's a combination of blue and yellow and it'll tie in the two colors. Nah, see what I did there? And you'll notice that I'm doing like a really light green instead of a dark green. And the reason I want it so light is that way it doesn't take away from the yellow. The background adds, it doesn't take away if that makes sense. And by the way, I'm gonna go in with a really warm gray to kind of frame it because most of this is cool tone. I'm gonna try to add in some yellow to kind of like pop it out a little bit. So we'll see. And now ladies and gentlemen, the last thing that I need to do is add in details, clean it up a little bit and I'm done. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. I forgot to film an outro, but anyway, I just want to say I had such a great time drawing this. I have a whole entire new respect for my illustrators out there. You guys are insanely hardworking and incredible. And if you want to see more of the videos like this in the series, I will leave a whole playlist down below. And yeah, with that being said, guys, thank you so much again for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.